Your name is irrelevant. The assistant principal scolded me for failing to take accurate attendance. When I asked her why, she explained you only missed two days from my class. I confirmed that was accurate and was shocked to see the weeks and weeks of absences you had in other classes. I told the counselors from week one that you belonged in honors classes, that you'd be bored otherwise. They thought you were slow and lazy because you'd do two or three math problems and put your head down, leaving the rest unanswered. Why didn't they notice the three you did were always right, and you just couldn't justify the mind-numbing repetition? Why didn't you tell me you needed help with those classes? Why didn't I notice myself? I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention, but I'll remember you. Your name is irrelevant. You told me on the first day that you were angry. You also said you liked to dance. I got frustrated with your jauntiness and refusal to sit down, with your trouble in keeping your hands to yourself or willingness to try at first. I'm sorry that it took so long to learn your anger was a result of your father's absence and that your mother couldn't afford the hyperactive medication you were prescribed. I'm sorry that after all the work we did and the time we spent and the effort we gave, you still didn't pass the state's test. I know that you went from a 5% to a 65%, but all they care about is passing and failing. And I know you improved in more ways than one. I know you're mature enough now to talk to me instead of swinging your fists at other adolescents when you get upset. I know you've grown. I hope you do too. And I'll remember you. Your name is irrelevant. You used to sit in the back of my class and pull chairs together to sprawl out and sleep, but I didn't let you, and you didn't like that. You worked your mouth far more than you worked your pencil, and you tried your best to look stupid in front of your friends, but I saw through your valiant masquerade. You did your best to fail just so you wouldn't have to try to succeed and run the risk of failure, because succeeding at failure seemed far more dignified to you than failing to succeed. I didn't tolerate that philosophy, and the hours we spent during my lunchtime and after school proved who was going to back down first. The administrators told me you were a waste of time, a lost cause, an empty case. I told them you had them fooled, and they told me I was the one who was tricked. I watched you taste success when I pulled you away from your peers long enough to feel safe from their judgment and actually try. I saw you strain the intelligent from your thug exterior like wringing a soaking sponge that was desperately pretending to be dry. When you threatened to fight me back in a classroom full of students just to save face and prove you weren't some soft-core, educated type, your words didn't frighten me, and when I gave you my address on the spot, I knew you wouldn't show up to call the bluff to fruition. I watched you walk into the exam that day with a passing grade and a head full of the tools you'd need. I never will understand why your book bag was filled with stolen drugs and razor blades that day, or why you lacerated your hand just before the exam. But the blood on the classroom floor left a trail to enough evidence to kick you out of school for good. I never saw your face again. I doubt I ever will. But I'll remember you.